Hey, welcome. Thanks for joining. Today I'm gonna to show you how to diagnose a common problem on a GM 1.4 liter with a piece of paper and a flashlight. So in the shop today, we have a 2015 Buick Encore with a 1.4 liter turbocharged engine. This engine can also be found in the Chevy Cruze, the Chevy Sonic and the Chevy Trax. Now, why this thing's in here today is because it has a few symptoms. It's burning oil, it has a whistling noise at idle, but the main reason is it has a check engine light with a P0171 code. Now, if you're not familiar with the P0171 code, it's a bank one system lean, or the, the bank is getting too much air or not enough fuel. And being a one bank engine, it's kind of just speaking for the whole, the whole motor here. So, the first thing we wanted to do is we wanted to kind of make sure that the problem was there before we started diagnosing it. So if you look at the scan tool data here, you can see we checked this. We're getting pretty lean here. We got about 34 at long term, 13, 14 at uh, short term. And, and this is very lean for this car. I and mean, this is almost maxed out on fuel trims. I'm actually surprised that this car is running as good as it is. So what do we test first? We have our lean condition and there's a lot of possibilities, right? We could have that intake leak or that, that bad fuel pump causing that. And we don't really want to go down the wrong rabbit hole and waste a lot of time. So we did a whole bunch of research on this car and we're kind of glad that we did because we immediately found a bunch of TSBs. And all the TSBs not only showed our lean code, but they also pointed out that oil consumption issue and our weird whistling noise that we had. And reading through the TSBs, it all kind of came into the same problem. Problem with the PCV valve. Now, the PCV valve on this system is actually located underneath this cover here. And it's actually part of this camshaft cover or valve cover here, it's built inside. Now, how do we test it? We know this is probably our problem, but we have to figure out if it's bad. Now, if you look real closely here, we have this small hole on top of the PCV valve. And what that is, is a breather so the diaphragm can move up and down. So. How we're gonna test this thing is we're gonna start the vehicle and we're gonna make sure that there's no vacuum here. No vacuum should be present here unless this diaphragm has an issue. So we're gonna start the vehicle up. And we're gonna take our piece of paper like we had before. And what I'd like to do is just kind of tear a little piece off so it's small enough. And I wanna put it in front of this little hole here and see if it sucks in. And if you look really closely, you can see that it's actually sucking in our piece of paper. And this is showing that this diaphragm is leaking or we have our vacuum leak here. And if you listen closely, you can actually hear the engine starting to run differently. So if you're like me, you're ready on your way to the parts store and you're ready to get your camshaft cover and get this thing fixed and back on the road. But hold on, there's one more thing we have to test. Reading through our TSPs, we actually found there's a problem that causes these PCV valves to fail and it has something to do with a non-return valve. Now, if you look at this motor, it's turbocharged, right? So this intake that normally would never be under pressure on a, a, a naturally aspirated motor is under boost pressure under load. That would give the ability for this boost pressure to get to this PCV valve. So what the engineers have done is they've developed a non-return valve that closes when the intake's under boost pressure and this kind of stops the boost pressure from getting to that crankcase. Now, what happens on these is that non-return valve falls out and then this boost pressure gets in the crankcase and actually ruptures this diaphragm. So what we have to do is we have to take this uh, PCV bypass hose off and you should actually be able to see the valve down this hole and then we can test to see if it's there or not. Now to check this non-return valve, we're gonna have to pull this hose off right here by releasing this metal clip so we can pull it up. Now be very careful because this hose is very common to break. They can become very brittle over time. And I like to remove this metal clip all the way sometimes because sometimes even if it's released, it can get stuck. You just don't lose it. And sometimes the O-ring falls out. If the O-ring falls out, you can put it back in there. It'll work, it'll be okay. So now with this hose out of the way, you can see it opens up this port and this is where the flashlight comes in handy. Now here's a couple close-up shots of what it's supposed to look like. And it, unfortunately looking down ours right here is ours is actually missing. So with our non-return valve missing, we're gonna have to replace this intake manifold. That part is not available separately. If we would've went and put that valve cover on without checking this, we would've had a valve cover failure very soon. So we're gonna go ahead and get this valve cover off and this intake off. And we're gonna show you some of the really important parts when you're fixing this problem. So let's get this thing off and get it fixed.
So when you're pulling these intake bolts, you're gonna need an e-torque socket, and this is gonna be an E10 socket. So it's gonna be an inward torque socket. Okay, so when pulling up this intake, make sure that you release this vacuum line right here. It's very important, it's very easy to break. And also on the back side here, we got a couple connections where uh, the wiring harness connects to. We got one here, here, and here, and they're just little trim tabs you gotta remove, otherwise you're not gonna be able to get that wi the wiring harness off, and then the intake won't be able to be pulled out of the car. So with the intake out of the way, you can see now with the wiring harness out, the wiring harness out here, and that PCV tube out of the way, we actually can just take these bolts out and get this intake out. And these are also gonna be these inward Torx bolts. Now, it may be stuck down a little bit here because it's been there for so long. There's actually a little RTV here. So uh, since it's getting replaced anyway, feel free to just give it, you know, just pry it up a little bit, try to get it released from the, the heads here. So now we got the cylinder head cover off. We can actually see the port here where the vacuum comes from. Now this is getting fed from the intake manifold and this is what puts the vacuum on the PCV valve. Then if you look on the valve cover, you can see the port where it actually feeds to the valve. Now, if you look at the other end here, we have these two larger ports. This is where the PCV system is actually getting vapors from the crankcase. There's two holes here and there's two holes on the cylinder head. And you can kind of see how this all works as one unit. So now we got our intake and our cam cover off. We're gonna get this all cleaned up so we can get it put back together. Okay, as you can see now, we got this thing pretty well cleaned up and we're ready to put the valve cover back on. But before you put the valve cover back on, make sure that we put some RTV on these two little slots right here and right here. This is where the timing cover meets the block. And if you don't put RTV there, you could end up with a oil leak. Now when it's time to put the valve cover back on, don't just start ramming the bolts tight. There's a very specific sequence that needs to be followed to get this thing tightened down properly. Um, once you get the sequence, these things will go down to about 71 inch pounds. Okay, so now we got the valve cover torque back down, we gotta put the intake manifold back down and this doesn't come complete. We had to swap over the throttle body, the fuel rail and the map sensor here. So we got all that swapped over. Now we're gonna get that back on the car here. We're gonna torque this down to 15 foot pounds and there was no sequence listed for this part. And also don't forget to install this uh, lower vacuum hose right here. I almost did. Okay, so make sure when you're putting this hose back on that you check to make sure your O-ring did not fall out. Mine did when removing it. If it did, just make sure that you shove this thing back in here and it seats where it needs to seat. Otherwise, you'll have a leak and you'll still have your 171 lean code. Okay, now that we got this car buttoned back up, we're gonna start it up and make sure those fuel trims come back down and we got our lean code taken care of. So I'm gonna start it up and we're gonna look at these fuel trims and they should come down almost instantly on this vehicle. Now it may take a while for it to start up because we got some of that fuel out of that fuel rail. So sometimes it's gotta charge up, get that air out of line. Now it may take a tad for it to go into closed loop, but once it did, we should watch our fuel trims come down here. Okay, you can see our short term is correcting already. It's, uh, it's going down to negative eight, negative 10. So it looks like it's trying to correct. And once our short terms come down, our long term should come down with it. So here you can see that we're almost in a positive now. If you add the short term to long term fuel trim, 
And if you really want to test it, you can take your special tool again and uh, we can stick it over here. And as you see here now, it's not sticking anymore. Okay, guys, it looks like this car is fixed and ready to go. Remember, when you get those trouble codes, do that research because it can help you get your problem fixed faster and avoid a costly repair that could come back. Remember, if we would have replaced just this valve cover, we would have had a failure real quickly without that non-return valve. So if you liked what you see here today, please subscribe, click that bell icon if you want to get notified when we have another video. And I think that's about it. So thanks for watching.